Hello and welcome to your podcast on business communication. My name is Christine Groth and I will be your narrator for this presentation. I will begin with an overview of the topics covered in this podcast, which include the evolution of business communication, developments that have impacted changes in business writing, characteristics of good business writing, steps in the writing process, types of writing outlines, and tips to simplify business writing. Let's get started by tracing the evolution of business communication. Not so long ago, you may recall that the only available means of transmitting formal written messages over great distances was through the U.S. mail service, and the telephone was used for less formal message delivery. Until the advent of the Internet in the early 90s, we were limited to these forms of communication in the workplace. The Internet has made it possible to create electronic messages in various forms that can be delivered very quickly over vast networks that cross the globe. Although electronic mail is the most widely used form of communication in the workplace, many other forms of communication are also available, including social networks such as Facebook and MySpace, blogs or electronic journals, and text messaging on wireless devices. Some of the new developments that have affected business writing include, of course, technology. The personal computer made it possible for us to compose messages using software with built-in editing capabilities that helped to improve the writing process. When the Internet was made available a few years later, we were able to compose and send electronic messages directly from the computer through network service providers, thus speeding the transmission of our messages. As a result of the move to more formal in types of writing in the workplace, the traditional letter format has been replaced by less formal types of business writing. Now email and memos are used for most internal types of business correspondence because of speed and convenience. The letter is reserved for more formal types of external communication. One of the reasons that business writing has become more informal is due to the Plain English Movement, which was introduced by the Security Exchange Commission in the early 70s. The focus of this movement is to promote simple language across professions, enabling the average reader to understand written messages more easily. An outgrowth of the Plain English Movement is the emphasis on a more conversational tone in business writing. The era of using big words and lengthy sentences has evolved into using more concise, clear language. If you'd like to learn more about the Plain English Movement, visit the website on this slide. Now that we've traced some of the developments that have affected the changes in business communication, let's take a look at the characteristics of good business writing. Simply stated, business writing should be purposeful, economical, and reader-oriented. After considering the previous discussion on the importance of informality, speed, and clarity, it makes sense that we've moved away from much of the jargon and outdated language we once considered to be the standard for business writing. Let's turn our focus to the actual process of business writing. We're now ready to discuss the three steps in the writing process, which include pre-writing, writing, and revising. Phase one, pre-writing, begins by analyzing the purpose of the message. You can best identify the purpose by answering a simple question. What do I hope to accomplish by writing this message? Next, you anticipate the reader's reaction by profiling the audience. In the final step of phase one, you will adapt your message by choosing the appropriate channel, language, and outline to accomplish your purpose. Phase two, writing, begins by conducting informal or formal research to collect necessary information related to the message. The most logical place to search for information is, of course, the files in your office. However, you may also use print or electronic sources, personal interviews, 
and observations to obtain relevant information. Once you have sufficient information on your topic, you can begin to develop an outline, which serves as a roadmap to start composing your first draft. Phase three, revising, is the longest phase of the writing process. You should plan to spend at least 50% of your time in this phase because you will be revising your draft for content and structure, proofreading for grammar and mechanical errors, and evaluating the message by soliciting feedback from peers. As you recall, the first step in phase one is to adapt the message to fit your purpose and the profile of the audience. At this point, you will choose between the direct and indirect writing outlines to deliver your message. The direct outline or deductive outline is used for routine business messages in which the audience is expected to have a neutral or positive reaction to the message. Therefore, you can begin by front-loading the main purpose of the message immediately. Direct approach messages use active voice sentences and you viewpoint, which places more emphasis on the reader than the writer. The indirect or inductive outline is used when you need to deliver bad news or persuade the reader. This type of outline assumes the reader to be either unconvinced or hostile toward your message. Therefore, you must begin with a neutral or buffer statement that does not reveal the main purpose. You must first provide explanation and details to support your message before revealing the purpose. You may use passive voice sentences to de-emphasize or camouflage the doer, especially if you are delivering bad news. Also, it's a good idea to mention reader benefits or incentives that may help the reader to react more favorably to your message. Let's turn our attention now to some steps that will help simplify, simplify the writing process. First, you should strive to use simpler sentences. The average sentence length should contain between 14 to 20 words for maximum readability. Second, use the same tense throughout rather than switching from one tense to another. Third, follow company writing standards by referring to style guides and company handbooks. In addition, use an approved reference manual such as the Gregg Reference Manual to check rules for grammar, spelling, and punctuation. Fourth, use descriptive headings in subject lines for emails and memos. And finally, proofread for proper punctuation and spelling to ensure the success of your message. In conclusion, remember to focus on your goal for writing. Connect with the reader by using conversational tone and practice the three C's of good business writing, clarity, conciseness, and coherence. Thank you for viewing this podcast on business communication. Follow the tips in this presentation and you'll soon be communicating like a pro.